We're going to sing another song tonight. Here I am worshipping you. And when we sing to the Lord, we know that we don't just give lip service to the Lord, but His desire is that we worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so tonight, I just encourage you to sing in your homes, to sing from your hearts, to think about the lyrics that you're singing tonight and to worship the Lord as you sing. Amen. And draw near to Him. Let's sing this.
worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you. I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you. I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you. I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you. Here I With all I am, worshiping you, bowing down in spirit and truth, with lifted hands, worshiping you, here I am, Lord, here I am, worshiping you, with all We're so thankful to be connecting with you here online this morning. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12 says this, Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. We've heard this scripture many times before, I'm sure. But did you know that in the New Living Translation, it says, So, take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Amen. Take a new grip even though your hands are tired. And I love this because in Hebrews 11, this is the chapter that talks about laying aside the weight and the sin that does easily beset us. And so regardless of what you've been through this week or through lockdown, it's encouraging us that even though that we may be tired and if you've held something really heavy for a long period of time, you know that your arms will be weak. But the scripture is encouraging us to take a new grip Get up off those weak knees of yours because today is a new day, new mercies, new forgiveness, new grace, new love. And so today I encourage you as the word goes forth, mix your faith with the word. God has a word for you today. Be encouraged. Grab a new uh, perspective. Go in faith. And I know that God has something good in store for your life. Praise God. We can't wait to see you back in church really soon. But until then, stay safe and God bless you. God bless. Bye. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Uh, It's good to be here tonight. Uh, First, I'd like to thank the pastor, Pastor Jonathan, for allowing me and for trusting me to teach the lessons tonight. Uh, Tonight, we are starting a new series entitled Gifted, Gifted. And um, uh, actually, this week was the first time we saw musicians, complete set of musicians in our church service on Sunday. And, um, and I just, like, admire them, how they play music, praise singers, you know, worship leaders, how they sing uh, praises unto the Lord. That's, that's just very good. That, that's something I cannot do, you know, play music. 
So I thought these people here, this, these musicians, our musicians in the church, we are so blessed that they are gifted. You know, the Lord has given them gifts, be able to play instruments uh, beautifully, and those uh, praise singers can sing well. And uh, that's something I can do. So um, we are so blessed that we have uh, gifted musicians, gifted singers, and we have gifted preachers with our, on our pastor. You know how, how anointed when he preached. And, our, and other uh, uh, ministers in our church, we are blessed. And other thing is we have the, the bishops in our, within our congregations, you know, and Sister Sue Downs as well. You know, we have so many good teachers in our church. We are blessed. Amen. And tonight, uh, we're going to look on unwrapping the gift. We are looking on unwrapping the gift. That's the title of our lessons tonight, Unwrapping the Gift. Okay. And our first scripture is 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 to 11. I will be reading from uh, NLT, uh, New Living Translations. Uh, oh, sorry, I will be reading on King James Version. Suddenly, it dis just disappeared on my, on my iPad, you know, the Living Translation. So maybe the Lord wanted me to read on King James Version. Okay. As every man had received the gift, even so ministered the same one to another. Oh, this is from First Peter chapter four, uh, verses ten to eleven. As every man had received the gift, even so ministered the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth. The God that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, mention here gifts. When do we receive gift? Okay. So, on the day of Pentecost, we know gift was given. That was the first time the Holy Ghost was poured unto the church. And that was the birth of the church. So a gift was given. Maybe that's where we get the tradition or customs of giving gifts to when someone was, when a baby was born. And um, what well, Peter stood up there when they all filled with the Holy Ghost, attracted a lot of people, obviously, because of the noise created uh, when they all speaking in other tongues. So he, Peter preached. Peter preached about that Holy Ghost, about, about, about what is that, um, you know, what is that phenomenon, new phenomenon? And he preached Jesus. He preached that Jesus was the both, that same Jesus was both Christ and Lord. And they crucified him. And the people were pricking their heart. They were convicted. So they asked, what shall we do? So he answered and said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this is the gift that we're talking about. Okay, so the first gift, which is singular gift. But here, the scripture we, we read, it mentioned gifts. In, 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 in New Living Translation, it mentioned gifts. And we read in the Bible, there are many gifts, plural. So what's the difference between gift, singular, and gifts, Plural, what's the difference in between, the, between the two? So, the term gift, singular, can be associated with the feeling of the Holy Ghost, as what we read um, on um, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. So, receiving gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay. So, the term gifts, gifts of the Spirit, are ministries and abilities that manifest in the life of a spirit-filled believer. In other words, when we receive the gifts of the spirit, we receive, that's when we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, it's a bit confusing, does it? 
Okay, I'll just show you. I have some. Okay, just a, a sub illustration here. It's a big bag, and every one of us would like to receive gifts on our birthdays or, fa or Christmas or uh, Father's Day or Mother's Day. And uh, this is gifts, it's a big gifts, big bag. It's like represents when, when we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay, gifts. Okay. And the gifts, which is the, the plural, you know, within the gift of the Holy Ghost, there are many other gifts. Okay, we have received the gift of the Holy Ghost, and the Lord bless us with more gifts. Okay, I got plenty here. Okay. Here you go. A lot of gifts. The, the Bible talks about gifts, a lot of gifts. Okay. Uh, the Bible says spiritual gifts is given to each of us so we can help each other. So that's the reason. One of the reasons. So we can help each other. Okay. The New Testament passages outlining the gifts are found in the book of Romans chapter 12 where we read the gifts, the service gifts or common gifts or natural gifts. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we read uh, that's where we found spiritual gifts. And Ephesians, and in Ephesians chapter 4, where we found, the, we call the ministry gifts. You know, those, and some was given past apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the, protect, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith, of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, unto the perfect man, unto the measure of the fullness of Christ. So there, there are lots of gifts that was given to us. Okay. There you go. Put some gifts here. So it just represents a lot of gifts. Okay. This is from the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see, the Lord has been so good to us, giving us a lot of wisdom. But it does not finish there. The Lord gave us also fruit. Fruit of the Spirit. What's the difference between the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit? You know, the fruit of the Spirit we found in the book of Galatians chapter, chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 23, it says there, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against us there is no law. Why, Why is it so important that, that, that we also receive the fruits of the Spirit. As Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruit. We shall know them by their fruit. Oh, so, uh, for, for the world, for other people, for those unchurched people to know that we are Christians, and they shall know, they shall know us by our fruit. Okay, so the fruit of the Spirit are qualities. Qualities of the character the character of Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit are the qualities of the character of Jesus. The Apostle Paul says in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 9, he says, If any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. So, it's very important that we have the Spirit of Christ. And this can be interpreted like uh, the Spirit when we receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Bible says that except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And, and also the Spirit, the, the qualities of the character of Christ. So when we receive the Holy Ghost, we become a new man. Or when we were born again, we become a new man. The holy nature created within us when we receive the Holy Spirit uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, 17 says, Therefore, if any man 
be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are become new. Amen. So we become new. And this is how we become, you know, our character change. You know, if, if we allow the spirit to, to freely flow through us in our lives, all the fruit of the spirit are manifested. Amen. Okay, I'll just put away this because it's crowding my, my pul the pulpit. Okay. I, I forgot to show the fruits. Okay, I got some fruits here as well. Okay, as part of the, as part of the you know, what the Lord bless us. Fruit. We got different fruits here. Okay. Lemon. There you go. Praise the Lord. We are blessed. The Lord bless us with the fruits of the Spirit and gifts of the Spirit. Okay. What about the gifts? In first Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, it says in a New Living Translation, it says, It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. So it's the one. It's the only one giver of the Spirit. It's the only one giver of the gifts. And that one Spirit is the Lord Jesus Christ. So the fruit of the Spirit grows within the believer. The fruit of the Spirit grow within the believer. And when understanding the gifts, it is the believer that grows and develops the ability to use the gifts that God has given them. So it's our ability, it's our responsibility to grow and develop the gifts that God has given us. Okay. Categories of the gifts. Um, Paul used the analogy of a human body when he described the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 14, it says, in, in New Living Translations again, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free, but we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit. And we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one body. So the church, we are, you know, is the body of Christ. And we have many members, different people, different cult from different culture, different background, different nationalities. But we are one in the Lord. We are one body. We are the church. At the end of the day, no matter what our role or what our, whatever gifts we have or our titles, everything we do must both edify and regulated by the love of God. Some giftings of God are obvious, external, dominant, others are not. Okay, the supernatural gifts of the Spirit are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 10. I'm going to read it. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. In, in New Living Translation, that verse says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. So verse 8, back to King James Version. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all this work at that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally 
or individually as he will. Okay. There are two major categories of the gifts of the Spirit. Two major categories. Number one is supernatural gifts. Those what we have read, supernatural gifts, or commonly we, we call them gifts of the Spirit or spiritual gifts. Now, the spiritual gifts can be further broken down into three sets of three. Number one is to know gifts, which is divine revelation, which is the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Secondly, to speak gifts, divine utterance, different kind of tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy. And thirdly, to act gifts, divine power, is faith, gifts of healing, and working of miracles. Okay, they are supernatural gifts. And the second category of the gifts of the Spirit is the common gifts. Or we call it also service gifts or natural gift. They are, simply not, they are simply in the sense that they tend to emphasize natural tendencies that they may or may not already be in the person. And uh, newly convert uh, Christians may uh, have already gift when they come to church. So they have natural gift coming from God. In, um, you can find this, this uh, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. It says here in, in New Living Translation, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gifts is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the ability seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. So the Bible says a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. But not everyone is showing the grip. Oh, sorry. Not everyone is showing their gift or undrafting their gift. Um, maybe the reason is some people are shy, or maybe there is maybe they are not given the opportunity to 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 share their talent or to share their gift. Um, in my home friendship group, in our group um, before COVID, we were relatively a good size. And when COVID uh, struck, so there's a lim there was a limit number of, uh, of people in the group. So we were forced to divide the group. We, actually, we were blessed that we were able to divide into four groups. So before, before COVID, uh, I normally do teaching and also systematic read. So we sort of alternate with each other, you know. And occasionally, one or two, once a year, other uh, member of the church or one other member of the group. So when, when uh, we were split, Sister Mary Chris moved to a different group. She had uh, her own group. Suddenly, I was the only one that teaches in the group. So I thought, oh. Then later, then took about a year, you know, this year actually. Um, then I thought, what happened if I you know, get sick, or I need to go away, what would happen to the group? The home friendship group is not about me, it's about the Lord. So uh, I asked um, a member of the group to, to do the teaching for once, and, 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 and she obliged. And I was actually like, like amazed how good she was, you know, how good she was. 
And I thought, this is just like uh, discovering a gem or unwrapping a gift. So she unwrapped her gift right then on that, on that evening when she taught uh, the lessons. And she just, just like a new, for me, it's a new discovery. So I believe there are many other uh, within home friendship groups on within the church that have their uh, talents, that have their gifts remains in the box. It's like this, no? it's still in the box. And, uh, and uh, maybe you're just waiting for opportunity to have it open to have it unwrapped. And, uh, and, you know, you don't have to be asked to, to, you know, volunteer us, you know, because the Lord has given you, every one of us has a, has a gift. That's what the Bible says. So um, don't be discouraged you not know, to, you know, just to, or don't be shy to keep your gift or your talent. Share it. It's for the glory of God. Okay. And it, it makes me smile actually in the church when uh, someone asks the pastor or even when someone asks me being the head usher of the church and when someone asks, what can I do to be a, a help of help in the church? What can I do? And, you know, brother, sister, welcome. You know, that's a that's, that's good thing. You know, they're sharing. They wanted to do something for the Lord. And this is like sh- sharing their gift. Amen. Sharing their ability. Okay. So do not keep. The Bible says also, uh, Jesus said, you know, do not keep your light or keep under the bushels or under the basket. Do not keep it trapped in the box. Show it. Let it shine. Let the no, let, let, let it shine for others to see. It's not for your glory. It's for God's glory. Okay. So both the supernatural and common gifts benefit the body of Christ. And we, both, we need both, uh, both kind of gifts. Sorry. We need both kind of gifts in order to be effective and to edify as God intended. Okay. Uh, God has given us the responsibility God has given us the responsibility to use them. And sometimes uh, we, we may doubt your gift or you, you may doubt or you may be your shy, whatever reasons it is. Um, this happened a long time ago. This is probably a confession from me. Uh, it, it's uh, happened many years ago when I was new in the church or so young in the church. Um, I doubt in the back of my mind, in the back of my mind, the, you know, the interpretation of tongues, the interpretation, whether is it from the Lord or not. Okay, so, so, so it's, it's, it's always behind me when, 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 when there is interpretation. So in, within me, I was asking, oh, is it from the Lord or is it just made up? So, one one service one day I there was a speaking in tongues there was and there was a long pause between the speaking in tongues and the interpretation and the Lord gave me the word to speak but you know I, I was like a feeling like bursting you know to to speak but I, I chickened out then the pastor. Uh, which was Bishop Downs, who was uh, when before he was a, a bishop. Then uh, spoke it's, it's the interpretation and and exactly word for word that I was going to say. So I thought, Lord, I I just I just could not believe it. It's just exactly the same word that he that I was going to say. Then, ah, oh, then doubt, you know, just like I was just like doubting Thomas, you know. Oh, maybe it's just like coincidence. Okay. So, uh, a different service. Okay, one day again, someone spoke in tongues again. And here, the Lord gave me the word again to speak. And there was a long pause and the same thing, you know, I, I chickened out. I, I just... Lord, forgive me. I just chicken out. Then again, 
the pastor spoke again exactly the same word again as was I was uh, that I was going to say. So, uh, Lord, forgive my unbelief, Lord. Now I erase all my doubt about the tongue and interpretations in the church. I believe it's from the Lord. Amen. The Lord speak to us through tongues and interpretations, maybe to individual or through through the. Uh, to the congregations, but it's, it's, it's from the Lord. I believe it's from the Lord. So our responsibility. We have a responsibility to use the gift because it's given to us for us to use. So the, the gifts must be skillfully wielded and developed. Imagine a child is given a, a sword, you know, a samurai sword, which is maybe a uh, one meter long, a child, okay? It's a very powerful weapon. In the, like 500 years ago, that was before guns was, was invented. They, that's, like, that's the standard of weapons, like in Japan, samurai sword, okay? Very sharp and ready to use. But the child has to grow up, practice, and train in order to use the sword effectively. Even, even an adult, if you handle a, a samurai sword, it's, it's dangerous, very risky. You may damage yourself or hurt yourself or, or others. Now, imagine if the same sword is in the hands of a warrior with years of training. It must be more effective, isn't it? Okay, so injury occurs. Injury occurs when the gifts are used immaturely or inappropriately. Here are some key concepts regarding responsible use of the gifts of the Spirit. There are four. One, the proper use of the gifts will never contradict the Scripture. It will never contradict the Scripture. You can interpret, say, Oh Lord, the Lord is coming back next week at 12 o'clock noon Daylight savings time. Well, the Bible says, you know, only the Father knows and no one knows when the time, when the day and time is his coming. So it's contradict the scriptures. Okay, secondly, remember to glorify the giver of the gifts, not the gifts themselves. We are, thirdly, we are accountable for how we use them. God will not withdraw them. Four, godly, self-sacrificing love must be the motivation to use the gifts. Okay, so love, mention here the love. Okay, use it, you know. Um, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it's the book of love. It says there, um, uh, no matter how gifted or spiritual we are, we need to keep us in check. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 to 3, it said, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or thinking symbols. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith so that I could move mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Okay, so love causes us to look at the body of Christ. So when, when one part of our body hurts, all is hurt. When we rejoice, our entire body rejoices. And it's the same way with the body of Christ. It's using the gifts. The Lord like us to use the gifts, you know, the gifts we have, because it helps everyone. Uh, if we use it, and especially when we are, uh, I am now preaching to myself here, uh, mistakes will happen along the way. You know, uh, scrapes, bumps, and bruises are part of learning. But as it is with anything else, the more you use your gift, the better you, you will wield it. Okay. And there's no miracle pill for spiritual success. 
And they, these are tried and true principles we need to put into practice, the reading of the Word of God. Prayer and fasting. Okay. If we have them you know, in our walk, daily walk with, love, with, with, with the Lord, daily walk um, with God, you know, reading of the Word, prayer, and pa- fasting, then the Lord will use us. And we we gonna have the courage more to use, you know, to, to stand up and use it and to 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 use our gifts. Okay. The purpose of the gifts is spiritual gifts are given to the church to build up the church and its member. And that's the purpose. So when we understand this principle, it causes us to operate correctly with an attitude of availability, faith, humility love and teachability so the lord you know if we humble ourselves and if we seek him the lord will use us amen i'm not closing um concluding and summing up what i have said tonight so god has given us spiritual gifts it's of us these gifts, whether supernatural or common, are meant to protect, unify, and edify the church and glorify God and help us to be more effective in building up the kingdom of God. We have the responsibility to use the gifts in the context of love. Amen. God has given you, given us gifts. Unwrap your gifts and use it. For the glory of God. Amen. God bless.